If I worked in a factory, I'd be like the guy always crawling around under his desk. Looking for the screw. A friend of mine is an astrophysicist, and his dad, he's from Geneva. His dad is a watchmaker and uh, retired, but the astrophysicist, he's like serious genius territory. And uh, I asked him once why the... the Earth's rotation doesn't cause, or if the Earth's rotation causes a time differential between the, the core of the Earth and the, and, the, and the crust, because time is different, you know, depending on speed, and time goes slower if you're moving slow relative to the other thing. So I was like, doesn't that mean that the earth is like twisting like time is twisting with the earth's rotation so in the center of the earth there's different time it's like the past in the center of the earth so, uh, because actually it's okay I gotta stop talking No, so to make that story quick, uh, time is moving slower at the crust of the Earth because of the speed. Time slows down when you move fast. So time is moving faster in the center of the Earth, but it's rotational, right? But it's around an axis. So I was like, around that axis of, at the core of the Earth, there, the, the, there should be like some twisting of time. Time is slower, but it's on an axis. It's not just slower in this, like, because the, because the earth is spinning on an axis. Anyway, I asked him that and he was like, oh, that's a good question. And then he took a stack of paper and he just started scribbling equations for like 10 minutes, like 30 pages of just like equation, 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 e numbers, equation, equation. And then I forget what the answer was at the end, <laughs> but the, um, but the point was, like, instead of thinking about it, he, I shouldn't say instead of thinking about it, his way of thinking about it was to do math. Okay, now that's not working out. So I'm going to try. The, the astrophysicist friend I was telling you about, he, his dad was a watchmaker. And I used to... doesn't really matter. I had a different office at one point. This is more like a studio and it's kind of very customized for my needs. Anyway, I, I used to have an office that was more of like an office office in the part of Geneva. And, and my friend asked me, something happened, I forget why, he, he didn't have an office for a while. He didn't have a place he could go work and the kids were bothering him not bothering him, but made it hard for him to work at home. So the, so he asked if he could just come and sit in my office and work on his astrophysics projects. And I was like, sure, of course. I haven't had this happen before where it's too, I have too much powder. I can't, I need to, I'm, I'm worried whatever I do, I'll end up with too much lacquer now.
So anyway, he came and worked in my office, which I assumed would be like quietly doing math at a table or at a desk. And he would he would sit there and and like look at his work and then he would stand up and and start stomping his feet and screaming F no no god damn it and he would just like scream at the top of his lungs at himself uh, profanities and he's a big guy like a. Uh, Big guy with loud voice, booming, screaming. And I was just like, is this a joke? Like, so I didn't want to say anything at first. But because I was just like, oh, he must be having a hard time. He's he's not going to do that again. And it just became this regular thing, like standing up, stomping, screaming. Like, it made you fear for your life. Anyway, what I realized was that that was probably learned behavior <laughs> because his dad was a watchmaker. And watchmakers in Switzerland work at home a lot. So I was like, his dad probably... worked at home these tiny watches and probably basically lost his mind. I feel like the screw disappeared into the movement. And if that's the case, that is not good. Oh, oh that is a drag. How the hell? Where the hell? Yeah, I see it right there. Mother f oh, f me. So it came out. That is fing insane. Jesus Christ. Sorry for the language. Motherfucker. <laughs> Doing that. I told that story about the astrophysicist friend whose dad was a watchmaker. <laughs> Okay, I just want to show off. The stack cannot lift. It's held down by all this crap. And therefore, we've overcome the absence of a clock dial, a watch dial. And it's the normal thing, which is for this spring to hold the hour gear in hand. We've done it through the stack. And that that's my contribution to watchmaking. You're welcome. Um, so now I'm gonna put this in a case And 
That's it. So there are a lot of times in the in the um, repair of this watch where I felt like rationally I should just stop and stop wasting my time. And um, I kind of felt like if I if I if I follow this through to the point where it's actually working and if it works consistently, which is not guaranteed until a few days have passed at least. Um, if I stop, I have that feeling of like I gave up on something. And if I don't stop, I have that feeling at the end of like, I, I, I figured this out. I kept going with it. I kept going with it. And the question of like, is this is only a 25 franc watch or 50 if you include the, the spare. Um, that's about 55 US dollars. 10 for the or even less, I think, for the new crystal. Let's say 10 for the crystal and the crown because they were inexpensive, as, as I recall. So that's like $65. Again, the uh, clasp was from the garbage. The gold bar in the strap is worth as much as the watch cost me, I would say, one gram of gold, 50 bucks. So when you start making this 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 calculation, like it's not worth putting 12 hours of time into it because 12 hours of time in a different realm where you're getting paid by, you know, if you divide your annual income by days and what's 12 hours worth or whatever. Of course, you can get into this thing where like you should just go buy a thousand dollar watch or five thousand dollar watch or twenty thousand dollar watch um, instead of wasting 12 hours on a $50 watch. However, there's a different calculus too, which is like the, not about money per se, but about value and about what you learn and what you gain in confidence and what you gain in understanding of your own abilities and your own ability to, to die, to learn. And to, for me, the thing about watches is like this thing of learning, Becoming confident about this world where micro technology, micro mechanical technology, the evolution of humans in our all across humanity, across all of our evolution, and this micro mechanical technology kind of matured to this point. And this is the realm in which we work and watchmakers work. And it's a, it's not so untouchable. It's not nuclear physics or uh, genetic medicine or something that's so specialized that, you know, this is something that's across culture and it's across time. And it goes back to the time before all this new technology, like it, because it's purely mechanical. And it's just a pleasure to, to have a sense of like, I understand that world. I understand my ancestors. I understand the processes, the steps by which people got to the point of making more and more complicated things. And I, I would say there's still like such an amazing amount of engineering in these watches, mechanical watches, pre-digital design. Um, it's still mind blowing. They did it. They did one design after another. They made them mechanically. They made them work. They imagined them and drew them on paper and then they made them work. And now you can do you can simulate a lot in the computer so you can. I think it's easier to design new movements today. Not necessarily easier because the it's the, like the computer doesn't do it for you. You still have to do all the work. It's just a better drafting tool that can simulate. Um, it can computers can simulate a lot more about mechanics uh, than people could do on paper. But when people were building watches, designing watches on paper, they were the computer was in their head. And I don't think it was any less capable than a modern computer. I think it was probably more capable in a lot of ways. Um, they had the drawings, they knew what was happening in their head, and they knew from experience of touching the materials and everything, what would work and what wouldn't work and what gear shape uh, was required. And and then all these like incremental changes over time, it's just like a beautiful evolution of of, of a technology that's by by its sheer size and scale, it's, it's insane and it seems almost out of touch to us today. But in terms of history and 
of of the culture of humanity it's uh it's not out of touch it is uh it's a historically it's a historical fact human beings did this anyway that's my lecture for the day and uh that was super fun thanks for watching whatever part of this you may have watched and that's it